Fred Film Radio, I'm Matt Micucci from the 77th Venice International Film Festival and I'm very pleased to be joined by Philip Jan Grimsha. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having me again. This is such a pleasure because, well, uh, you know, this is probably the film that I was looking forward to the most. I was telling you before the interview. Now it's uh, on the record. Now it's on the record. <laughs> uh, most people who know me know that I'm a huge fan of both Dennis Hopper and Orson Welles and uh, here we have Hopper Wells. Now, uh, would you like to maybe uh, tell our listeners who don't know anything about this film yet what, what it actually is? It's this <clears throat> intimate conversation between the two. Um, this was, uh, it, it was shot in 1970 in November uh, while Hopper was editing Last Movie in New Mexico. Right. Uh, well, uh, Wells had just come back to the States. He, he started very, very early work on Other Side of the Wind. Um, but really, he had been away from the States for 12 years, and, and the world had changed in that time. Um, and here was Hopper, who revered Wells, um, who used the Wells model when he shot Easy Rider. Uh, he acted, directed, written, produced. He did everything, much like Wells had done with Citizen Kane. And, and Hopper, at the time, had this huge box office success that eluded Wells uh, with all of his films. And Wells was very curious to meet this young new king of Hollywood uh, who revered him so much. Right. And uh, what was their relationship like? I mean, what, what, what's your take on it? Just looking at the uh, conversation, there's a dynamic there. I think they're getting to know each other. Um, obviously, it's uh, for those who have seen it already, and, and I always refer to it as a conversation. Everybody else has started referring to it as an interrogation. Uh, a little bit. A little it's, bit. It kind of yeah. sounds like that sometimes. So it, it's interesting. I think, uh, you know, Wells was such that he, and obviously knowing that Hopper um, had so much respect for him, he didn't let him off the hook. If there was, a, if there was something that he wanted to get to, uh, he would approach it almost like a chess game from every piece until, until Hopper felt forced to confront it. Yeah, it's fascinating to see that. Now, can you tell me how uh, the footage was found? I mean, it wasn't found. It was just, uh, it's, it's something that we had with the 100 hours of Other Side of the Wind footage. Right. And so it was in there. It, it didn't quite fit Other Side of the Wind. We used 30 seconds of it or something. Oh. Uh, it, it's there during the party scene. Right. Um, it just felt so standalone. Um, it's, Wells does speak as Jake Hannaford on two or three occasions in, in uh, Hopper Wells, but really he's speaking as Wells. Um, it's Wells who has this interest and, and who knows what he thought about the footage and how he was going to use this footage rather. Um, so it, to us we set this aside and the secondary goal of the Other Side of the Wind editing session was uh, to help Morgan Neville with the Love Me When I'm Dead, which was also here in, in 2018. Yeah. And so anything that we knew wasn't going to fit Other Side of the Wind, we, we said, okay, Morgan, this is, a, this is a curio, maybe this will fit. But this didn't fit M Morgan's narrative either, because he had a very specific arc that he was pursuing. So we thought this was fascinating, but we, we set it aside. And I just felt like, okay, once I get rid of my Wells fatigue, uh, maybe this is something we'll come back to. Yes, and you did come back to now, and we're all very glad. Of course, The Other Side of the Wind was presented two years ago. We should specify that. And uh, we ha that's all the time we have, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. You got an official screening to make, but uh, it still was a great pleasure talking with you uh, about Hopper Wells. Thank you very much. Likewise, and thank you now that this is your favorite film. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, and this is Fred Film Radio, the Festival Insider.